Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another lecture on environmental impact assessment and environmental audit. Today, we'll continue our lecture on environmental audit. So last week, we were able to define what an audit is, the scope of an audit, the audit process, the planning, the choosing an audit team, inspecting, so collection of sample, analyzing sample, and evaluating the report. We're able to follow the steps involved in audit, the plan, the do, the check, and the act. The scope of an audit, the objective of carrying out an audit, the pre-audit process, and audit team selection. Today, we'll continue with the proper auditing. How do you conduct an environmental audit? How do you conduct an environmental audit? The first major process you carry out in conducting an environmental audit is to do what you call a preliminary meeting. A preliminary meeting is the first stage of an environmental audit process. This is one on-site meeting which comprises of the management and the audit team. That means the company that is to be audited and the management team, the auditing team, will sit down together and design the mechanism by which the audit will go. In this meeting, the approach and the methodology are discussed, questioned and asked by, from the staff, and the procedure by which the audit will take place will be structured out. The questionnaire will be reviewed and the question will be answered. It is necessary and it's very, very important for us to have a pre-audit exercise. A pre-audit meeting will enable you to explain the modalities and the process by which you want to carry out the audit to the people concerned. The second stage is the document review. As an auditor, it is very, very important for you to check the documents available in the companies. What are the op uh, operational records? What are the records of monitoring? What are the calibration? What are the transportation? What are the meeting? You need to do what you call document review. The document review will enable you to know what the company lacks. What are the problems the company has been facing for the past few months? So this is very, very important. After the meeting, Gather the documents available in the company. What are the permits the company have? What are the things the company have? And you watch, you review it. Then you carry out what you call a site inspection. As an auditor, site inspection is very, very important for you because what you see is very, very important. You don't rely on information given to you when you are carrying out an audit. You don't rely on an information given to you when you are carrying out an audit. During an on-site audit activity, it's important to work with procedure, which consists of steps which must be followed by the auditor to ensure that there is consistency in the implementation of the audit and the reporting of the results. Consideration for an on-site audit is very, very important. You'll be able to reconcile on-site activity with the record that are given to you. You'll be able to document what really happened. You interview staffs and get perspective about what happened in the industry. So if you're carrying an audit, you must go on the site. You must go on the site to see for yourself what exactly is happening. You must assess compliance with statutory and departmental requirements. What are the uh, the approval the companies have obtained. How are they falling short of the approval? Those are things you must ask for on site. During on site audit, it is important to address all the area within the scope of the time allocated for the exercise. Also, during the site inspection, you must take pictures, you must make diagram, you can also use map. Now, satellite image are also used now. To do what? To make judgment. You can go back in time to look at the satellite image and see what exactly is happening 
that company, where it is located, what was there before the company was located? Is it a beer land? Is it a developed land? That will enable you to go back in history and look at, at what has happened to the company. Also, the next step is you review the audit exercise. So when you obtain all these data, you need to sit down and verify them. Imagine you go to a place and you, you are there on site and the noise level you are reading is 500 decibel. And you were there that day and you, you, can't, you saw your staff recording 500 decibel. Ah, you find out that, is it that the equipment is malfunctioning, uh, malfunctioning or something else has happened? A place that is so quiet and the noise level is so high. That is when you review the audit exercise. In data collection, information collected through interviews or documentation, you need to what? Observe them properly. When we are recording data, sometimes somebody wants to record, instead of him recording five, he mistakenly record 50. And the standard is 10, and he recorded 50. And you are there that day. During the review exercise, before you write it, you document it, you see that those things are, are very, very wrong. So the verification of the audit data is also important. This will guarantee that the document you are producing is what? Is genuine. You cannot be writing a report and the result is questionable. As an auditor, the report you are writing should not be questionable because they, you are an expert in that field. So after verification, the finding needs to be evaluated. You need to evaluate your own findings, whether you are right or you are wrong. At this stage, ensure that all issues and problems have been covered and those which require immediate attention are what? Identified. Those which require mitigation approach for management are also what? Discussed. Questions could be asked by organization and representatives. Feedback provided as to the conduct of the audit is also very, very important. You cannot do an audit without seeking for feedback. You have to ask the company members, what did they see? What happened to this? So when you take a reading, like you go to a company that is manufacturing uh, food products, and when you test their wastewater, you find out that there's an hazardous materials in it. And you wonder how did an hazardous materials come in the food industry? A food industry does not use chemical. You want, to, you want to query them. You want to ask them. So those are things you must do to verify the result. You just, go, you just don't go and pass and, and print the results and, and submit it. You must be able to query why you get that result, what really happened with those results. At the end of the audit, you must do a close meeting. You must do a close meeting. You first explain the result you get. You explain the result you get. You look at it, the creature side, the, 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 the negative side, the positive side. The close meeting is a very crucial to the implementation of findings on site. Hence, the manner of communication has to be cordial, yet firm. You don't have to insult the company. You don't have to paint everything negative to them. You just have to explain to them what really happened. After the audit, what next? The what next is out of the site activity. The out of the site activity is when you prepare the audit report. When you carry out an investigation, it is expected that you submit a report. So also when you do an audit, it is expected that you do, you do, you submit a report. So a draft report contain the audit findings, recommendation, provide action plan for the implementation or improvement of the fourth area. There are things you have seen that are bad. There are things that you have seen that are bad. So the next thing for you to do is to what? To explain it as a corrective measure. So an audit report is something that is good. An audit report is something that is good. But what makes an audit report good? One, you should state the factual findings, including compliance to standard policy and legal requirement. Those do over sabi. 
Don't do over Sabi. Only what you see is what you should document. It should also include recommendation for remedial action or improvement. It should be accurate. The finding must be free from errors. Don't add what is not there. It should be clear. The audit should also be clear. Hello, Mr. Patrick. Hello, Mr. Patrick. You are raising up your hand. Any issue? Mr. Patrick? Okay, so we are clear. The language used should be simple and easy to understand. Don't try to prove that you know English too much and you now decided to do what? You now decided to write. You now decided to write. You say you don't have audio. Check your side. Check your side if you don't have audio. The problem should be from your side, not from our end here. Is everybody listening having audio? So check your side. It should also be straight to the point. Your information should also be straight to the point. The draft report should be prepared on time. Don't allow it to stay for so long. Don't allow it to stay for so long. Don't allow it to stay for, for a, a, a lower period. So when you, when you are prepared, ready to do the audit report, what are the content of an audit report? What are the content of an audit report? The content of an audit report is what I'm going to explain. The first is that an audit report must have an executive summary. An audit report must have an executive summary. An executive summary is normally about five or 10 pages. An audit report is normally about five or 10 pages. It is what the chief executive of the company normally read. The, 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 you don't expect the MD of the company or the chairman of the company to read 50 pages or to read 30 pages. If the executive summary is normally what the chief executive of the company read. The next is the introduction. The introduction explains what the company is all about, what the company's activity is all about. If it's a manufacturing company, if it's a servicing company, if it's a logistic company, that we introduce you about the company, the team of the company, when the company was founded, the year the company was founded, what is the turnover of the company. All general activities about the company will be under the introduction. The next one will be the purpose and the scope of the audit. What is the purpose and the scope of the audit? You want to know, you, you, you want to tell them what is the purpose? What is the scope of the audit? Is it an environmental audit? So if it's an environmental audit, what is the scope? Are you doing the air? Are you doing the water quality? Are you doing the soil? Are you doing the environmental health or the occupational health of the workers? What are you doing? What are you checking? What are you checking? So it is very important for us to know the purpose of an audit report and know the scope. Like I gave an example the other time. The Dangote refinery process uh, complex, it has about four industries in it. It has the fertilizer, it has the petroleum, and it also has some other activity. So if you want to do an audit, let us know, is it the fertilizer you are doing the audit on? Is it the refinery or is it everything? So you must define the scope of your audit. Is it the air quality alone that you are auditing? Or is it the water or is it the general environmental audit you are carrying out? The next one is the methodology. What methodology are you using to carry out the audit? What methodology are you using to carry out the audit? What methodology are you using to carry out the audit? Are you doing a questionnaire-based audit? Or are you doing a physical audit? So if you are doing a physical audit, you must go there to ask questions. You carry out equipment. You measure the noise level. You measure the radiation. You can test the temperature of the workers. You can collect blood sample of the workers. If you want to do occupational health, you want to know what the workers have been exposed on. So every method you use to carry out the audit, you must document them under 
methodology. Then you now do the discussion and analysis of the findings. After, do, after carrying out the study, after collecting the questionnaire, after doing all the tests, there'll be a result. There'll be a result. So you want to do the discussion of the result. You tell them, after testing the, your workers' blood sample, we find out that most of the workers, their blood pressure is high, or they have low blood sugar, or they have this. So those are things you must discuss and try to find out, OK, the blood sugar of anybody working is this. I remember that there was one company I went to do a lecture to. And I asked them that do they do, do they do the blood check of their workers? They said they don't do the blood pressure. They don't do the test of the and I now recommend that the MD to go and do what? To go and to ask the workers to go and do tests. The following Monday, they asked all the workers to go and do tests. The driver to the MD. Thank God that he, 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 was, he was taken to the hospital. If not so, he would have died because his blood pressure is so high and they did not know. They see that he's a man that is fit. Imagine if he's, why he's going on driving the, the MD on, on highway and he, he, he got into coma. So periodic check of our workers is very, very important. So when you do the test, when you color the result, you look at the reference to the results. If the blood pressure of people are supposed to be 60 and your company workers are 90 to 100, you know that it has deviated from the reference. So what do you do? You must put a corrective action in place. So when you put a corrective action in place, you also do recommendations. You must also give them recommendations. You must also give them recommendations. If you do an audit and you find out that there's a problem, there is need for you to do recommendations. If you don't do recommendations, your work has not finished. Because as a consultant who carried out an audit and you see a problem, you must make a solution for them. So actions and recommendations are the, the things you must put in an audit report so that the workers, the workers and the top management of the company will put a proper thing in, in place. At the end, you must conclude. You must make a conclusion to the report. A report without a conclusion is very, very bad. And you don't conclude that your company activities is poor, your company activity is bad, or your company is this. Your conclusion must be something that is encouraging to the company. That's why the situation is bad. You can use a mild word to explain to them, okay, we can do better next year, we are lacking in this part. We are lacking in this part. Don't write it in a way that the company will get uh, discouraged. At the end of the report, you put appendix. Appendix are a list of people that help you to take part, the pictures, and all the audit program. You put it, you put everything, you add it into it. Those are things you, you do. So apart from having a good report, Apart of having a good report, the person that wants to do a good report must have integrity. So there are characteristics of a good auditor or a good team. The facts should be presented in the report and not personal opinion. Don't say because the company did not pay you the money in, uh, in good time. You now start putting your company is a bad company. The security manager is a bad person. The HSC manager is bad. No. Don't personalize issues in reports. They must ensure accuracy, consistency, and objective in performance of the audit. You must be professional in, in, in what you are doing. Professionalism should be demonstrated in the face of auditing. The company must show that you are professional. An environmental auditor should have suitable education and professional experience to carry out their duties include communication skills work schedule and planning. And you must do have a good knowledge of data analysis. And you must be able to write. Don't be an auditor who cannot write. Don't be an auditor who cannot write. You must be able to write. You must be able to communicate what you have. 
So what are the key success to uh, uh, what are the key to a successful audit? Key to the successful audit that you must get the support from your management from the management of the company. If the company that gives you an audit are not supporting you, if they are not ready to support you, there's nothing you can do. If they are not ready to support you, there's nothing you can do. Participation by all participants. Participation by all participants is very, very key. All parties is very, very key. Their, particip their, their participation is very, very key. Auditor independence and objectivity is also good. You must show objectivity and you must be independent. You can be working for two companies who are, who are competitors. Don't use the information of one company on the other company. You must be independent and you must be objective. Agreement on procedure and scope. You must agree on the procedure and the scope you want to use so that the discord will not happen. Implementation of action plan and remediation is also very, very important. So what are the benefits of carrying out an environmental audit? You are an auditor. You want to go and do a presentation in the company. You want the company to tell you to do an audit. Or you are an HSC manager. You want your company to do an audit. They will ask you, what is the benefit of the audit for us? It demonstrates visible commitment to improving the organization's environmental performance. An environmental audit shows that the company is ready to improve its environmental performance. It's a foundation for development on an environmental management policy or efforts in improving existing plan. If you do an audit, it will help you to know where you are lacking. An environmental audit also helps you to identify risk and impact and also give opportunities that is happening. An audit review process and plant operation. If you carry on an audit, you'll be able to know how you are deficient in one place or the other. It also helps you to include emergency response planning and also plan for future events that can occur. An environmental audit also increases action to be taken by organization activity to meet environmental goals and suitable development. It also helps you to put things in place for resource management. Environmental audit can also be good financially. It can prevent financial loss. It can prevent closure of the organization or activity by company. If government official come to see a defect in your company, they may sanction your company or they may seal the, com seal the company down. But if you have been able to find that out, you will save money from the company. Access of financial implication of environmental liabilities to new uh, regulation. Companies can be sued for any things that occur to them. When you get, a company gets sued, they pay liability, they pay compensation. But with the audit, you can help you to look at things before you get sued. Also, audit can help you to identify area where costs can be saved in terms of energy conservation, minimization, waste reduction, and reuse and recycling. Some companies, they throw away most of their waste. And these waste are things that can generate money for them. Company that produces paper, and they have paper cuttings, and they just go and burn it away, instead of them selling it to paper company who, re who recycle paper. So instead of throwing it away, the audit can help you to know that, ah, the volume of paper we are throwing away, you can sell it and make money. And audit can save you from legal actions, I've said it. The, to measure and improve an organization or activity compliance with environmental legislation and regulation, an audit can help you to seek for permits, it can help you to reduce emission, it can help you to meet effluent standard. It can also help you to avoid legal sanctions, provide evidence for implementation of environmental management in court. If a, if a, a, a citizen sue you to court, sue your company to court, or they sue or they sue your company. Your report of an audit can help you to look, to be as a defense in the court. Your report can be a defense for you in the court. Audit can also help you to know the lack of training you have for your staff. It can help you to do an assessment for training and knowledge and awareness of your employee. 
It can also help you to increase the awareness of the management of the staff and the organization. An audit report can also help you to provide information required for insurance company or financial institution and also other stakeholders. In conclusion, an audit process is a crucial aspect of the environmental auditing. It provides adequate planning and execution. In order to, for process to succeed, there is need to involve key human resources that will carry out their roles effectively. This is one of the key things that we do. Let me go back from two weeks ago. For those who did not join us. Today, we are discussing about the audit process. The audit process is the main aspect of environmental auditing. The process is a stage series of systematic and documentation process. It's a stage that makes you prepare an audit report. And what is the audit process about? It's about planning. It's about choosing a team. And after choosing a team, you inspect the site, you collect data. After collecting data, you analyze the data, and you now evaluate the audit. So in the audit process, it has four steps. It has the plan, the do, the check, and the act. The plan, the do, the check, and the act. The plan aspect of the audit looks into the scope and the commitment. The do involves the carrying out of the audit itself. The check is the verifying of the report. The act is the action you take to do what has been carried out. So before you carry out an audit, you want to know the scope of the audit. You want to know the audit site. You want to know the boundary. What type of parameters are we taking, talking about? What type of audit do you want to do? Do you want to carry out water sample? Do you want to carry out air quality? Do you want to look at their waste? Do you want to look at the, the health of the workers? So what are the objectives of an audit? Why do you carry out an audit? The objective of an audit is to investigate information such as the history of the facility, examine current company practice, i.e. review the resources that is used, control pollution, check how they store their hazardous material, and also check their housekeeping. An audit can also be used as a form of compliance to legislation or a company policy. It can also be used as an internal policy or company, or company conformance to regulation. It can also be used to identify area of improvement and opportunity. So the audit has, audit has three different steps. There is pre-audit process, there is the audit process, and the post-audit process. The pre-audit process includes determining of the scope of audit, selection of the audit team, obtaining audit information, and the management commitment. Those are the pre-audit process. So the selection of the team. You want to do an audit, you must be able to select the audit team. Do they have the competency? Do they have the knowledge of what they want to do an audit about? You must also select the area. Is it air quality? Is it water use? Is it energy consumption? Is it noise? Is it emergency record? Do you want to look at the complaint about the company? Those are the things you want to do. The pre-audit information also, you want to gather what are the information that is available for you before you start carrying out the audit. You also want to get the management commitment. The management must be committed to, with you to carry out the audit. Now, during the conducting the audit itself, what do you do? Conducting the audit itself, what do you do? What do you do? You do the preliminary meeting. You do the preliminary meeting. The third house from the right. You do the preliminary meeting. You carry out document review. You carry out site inspection. You inspect the site and you gather information. After that, after you collect the data, you review the data you, you have, you verify the data, and you have a closed door meeting with the company. After that, you do a post audit exercise. The post audit exercise is when you draft the report. You draft the report, and the outcome of the report is what you use to, to do what? To give recommendations. 
A good audit report contains an executive summary and information, the purpose and scope of the audit, the methodology used to carry out the audit, the discussion of your findings, and the action, recommendation and action to be put in place. What are the benefits? What are the benefits of an audit? There are, there are what you call management benefits, there are financial benefits, and there are legal benefits. Also, training is also part of an audit. That is the end of the class. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Any question? Smoker like this, Pontiac, black. Any question? Every building has to do black. Any question? We have five minutes more. Any question? So in the, in, when there is no question, I have assignment for us. Are we all listening? Uh, Are we all listening? Yes, sir. Assignment. Okay. EIA. Environmental impact assessment in Nigeria is as a result of accident. Discuss. Environmental impact assessment is as a result of accident in Nigeria. Discuss. You submit via my you submit to my email. Send your answer to my email, ladedoing at gmail.com. Environmental impact assessment is as a result of accidents in Nigeria. Discuss. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see in two weeks' time. Next Saturday, there is no lecture. We are doing Salah. So for the, Muslim, ah. for the Muslim among us, I'll be expecting my ram. For the Muslim among us, I'll be expecting ram. I don't know the number one. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your holiday. We'll see, we'll see August 8th. Our next okay, lecture sir. will be August 8th, 5 o'clock. Okay, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. See you, people. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes,